All right, so now I'm going to talk about solution dilution. So to dilute a solution simply means to add solvent to the solution. So remember that the solvent is our majority component. In other words, the, the solvent is what does the dissolving, not what becomes dissolved. That's the solute, if you remember. And when we dilute a solution, the solution becomes less concentrated. So for instance, if I had a concentrated aqueous solution, aqueous meaning that the solvent is water, if I, if I had a concentrated aqueous solution and I diluted it, that just simply means adding solvent to it. And once I added the solvent to it, the solution is now less concentrated. So there's a pretty easy way to quantify uh, solution dilution. And in general, the following equation is used. M1V1 equals M2V2. So what M and V stand for, well, let's just write it down. M is the molarity. And remember that is in moles per liter or simply molar, so not moles per liter times molar, moles per liter or molar. And V just stands for volume, so V is the volume. And that's typically in liters, but make no mistake, it could be given in uh, milliliters, you know, gigaliters, just whatever prefix. It's more commonly just liters and milliliters though, maybe even microliters, anywho. So let's go over what M1 and V1 and M2 and V2 are. M1 and V1 apply to the concentrated solution. So I'll just stick it over here, concentrated. And M2 and V2 apply to the diluted solution. So my concentrated solution has a molarity and a volume and my diluted solution has a molarity and a volume and they so happen to be related by this equation. And the reason why they're related by this equation, well, what is molarity? Remember, molarity is moles per liter. So we have the moles one over the liters one times the volume of one, which is in liters usually. And then we have the moles in two over the liters in two times the liters in two. Well, we can cancel out liters on both sides and we're left with nothing but moles. So what this equation is really saying is that the amount of moles is conserved when we dilute a solution, which is true because we're not messing with the solute, we're messing with the solvent. So hopefully that gives a little bit more insight as to why this equation uh, works. So let's go through an example where we actually use this equation. And I like this, com this coming up example because it's, it sort of resembles a problem that you might encounter on an exam. So a lot of them happen to be worded kind of like this one. So the problem says, what volume of a 12 molar HCl solution must be diluted to 10 milliliters to make a three molar HCl solution? So I wrote the volume in blue because that's going to be our unknown. So I'm just going to call that V1. So V1 is our unknown. So that's what we're trying to figure out. And it says what volume of a 12 molar solution. So I assume that the 12 molar solution from which you're taking this volume applies to solution one as well, the more concentrated one. So I'm going to say that the molarity of 1 is equal to 12 molar. And then it says what volume of a 12 molar solution. So we have the volume unknown. We have the molarity of 1. That is also that is 12 molar. And it says that we have to dilute it to 10 milliliters to make a 3 molar HCl solution. So we're going to have a V1 and an M2, or excuse me, a V2 and an M2. The volume given is 10 milliliters, and the molarity given is 3 molar. 
So that's basically how to choose which one is M1, which one is V1, and, and so forth. Typically, it doesn't matter what the subscripts 1 and 2 are as long as they're both the same. So, I, in other words, I could switch this around and I could put I could put the 2 here and the 2 here and then I could put the 1 here and the 1 here. It doesn't matter as long as these two are the same and these two are the same. So, let's solve the equation. Remember that the equation is m1 v1 equals m2 v2. Well, if v2 is our unknown, then I can divide both sides of the equation by our m2, because we're trying to get v2 all by itself, m2. The m2s on the right side of the equation cancel, and you end up getting that v2 V2 is equal to M1 V1 over M2. So the algebra to get to the uh, final result isn't really that bad. At this point, all we have to do is just plug in our numbers and we're good to go. So M1 and V1. M1 is 3 molar. V1 is 10 milliliters. M2, that's 12 molar. Molar here cancels with molar here. And so we have nothing but 3 times 10 over 12, which is 30 over 12. And you can actually reduce this by dividing the top and the bottom of the fraction by 6. And you end up getting 5 halves and this is in milliliters. So that is our answer, 5 halves milliliters or 0.4, whichever one. Typically you wouldn't want to express it as a fraction because you're trying to keep tabs on the number of sig figs and things like that, but I just did it um, because I'm not really trying to go over sig figs in this video, I'm just going over the equation. but. So that's how to use the equation. Very straightforward. All you have to do is algebraically solve for your unknown by dividing both sides by the other variable that's associated with the, with the unknown. And typically, like I said, three of them have to be given so that you can solve for the one unknown. So there you go.